Recently, the senior leadership of our two-year institution elected to participate in the National Student Clearinghouse's Post-Secondary Data Partnership. As our institution's Director of Institutional Effectiveness, Prakash is responsible for ensuring that the data for the PDP are collected and uploaded. However, Prakash has only been at the institution less than a year and is still learning which offices collect which data. Prakash begins by reading the PDP knowledge base. He sees that there are two required files called cohort data and course data, and one optional file for financial aid data. Prakash makes a note to speak with senior leadership and the Director of Student Financial Aid on whether they want to include the financial aid data. He also makes note of the file structures, specifically the header rows, to ensure the data will upload properly. Next, Prakash begins to review the data elements that will be needed for the file uploads into the PDP system. Prakash's first question is the definition of cohort. Prakash realizes that PDP is more inclusive than other reporting that his office manages. The definition of cohort includes all undergraduate students who attempted at least one course in a given term for the first time at your institution. The PDP reports students in all starting terms, fall, winter, spring, and summer. Students may be first time ever in college or new transfer students into your college. Students may be enrolled at any program level, including credential seeking, college remedial, developmental, or college preparatory, adult basic skills like English as a second language, and non-credit vocational students. Also include fall entry students who enrolled in summer work prior to first term of enrollment with credential seeking status, like students enrolled in a summer bridge program or developmental or remedial coursework in the summer term. For dual enrollment students, we need to include past dual enrollment students who took a course or courses at your institution while simultaneously attending high school. But we need to exclude current dual enrollment students or those taking a course or courses at your institution while simultaneously attending high school. For non-credit vocational students, only include those who enrolled in courses that could lead to an occupational certificate, industry certificate, or other type of credential of economic value, as well as those students who are simultaneously enrolled in credit-bearing courses. But we should exclude non-credit vocational students enrolled in purely personal enrichment courses. For example, Ellie takes ESL courses at our institution in summer 2019 and plans to start college courses in fall 2019. Aiken takes a college English course in fall 2018, but is also taking high school classes. When he graduates high school, he continues to take classes at our institution in fall 2019. Both students should be put into the 2019-2020 cohort with a cohort term of fall and can indicate they have passed summer or dual enrollment in the cohort file. Ultimately, our institution has the flexibility to decide based on our own reporting needs which terms and cohorts to report are different groups of students. Prakash continues to scan the PDP knowledge base. The next several terms are standard information like student name, address, date of birth, and high school GPA. Then he reaches the term first gen, which stands for first generation status, which might cause challenges. First generation status indicates whether either of the student's parents has completed a certificate or higher credential at a post-secondary institution. There are five categories associated with this variable. No parent has attended post-secondary. At least one parent has attended post-secondary but earned no credential or degree. At least one parent has a certificate. At least one parent has an associate degree at least one parent has a bachelor's degree or higher. However, in our institution's data systems, first-generation status is collected through an admissions form and asks if the student has a parent who attended college with the answer options of yes or no. Prakash notes that the PDP has accounted for this and suggests that users report N if neither parent has a degree and A if at least one of them has a degree. 
Continuing his scan of the PDP data elements, PEL status, attendance status, program of study, and GPA should be easily extracted from our data systems. Then he comes upon gateway math status and gateway English status. Last year, the curriculum committee completed the process of defining our institution's gateway courses. Our definition is any course that is the first in a program of study, like introduction to accounting or introduction to chemistry. This definition does not match the PDP definition, which is the first college level math and or English course required for the student's degree program. Students in major fields can sometimes choose from several courses to fulfill the single course college level math requirement. We may classify more than one course as a math or English gateway course. Additionally, to determine if gateway courses are required for a student, the following conditions need to be met. There is a gateway college level course requirement in the program of study. The student has not already completed the requirement prior to enrolling at your institution nor is exempt due to AP credits or other options accepted at your institution upon entry. Prakesh will need to meet with the curriculum committee and have them identify courses that match the PDP gateway course definition. As Prakesh finishes his preliminary scan of the PDP data elements, he realizes that he needs to build a working group of colleagues to help define and or identify these data elements. Prakesh asks Mark, our institution's registrar, Prachi, the director of student financial aid, and Joshua, the director of enrollment management, to be part of the PDP working group. 